We have waited 364 days for the rematch, and it's here. Iowa LSU. How do the Hawkeyes pull off the win and beat the team they couldn't a year ago in the national championship game? We break it all down today. Locked on Hawkeyes. You are locked on Hawkeyes. Your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, welcome in. I'm Trent Condon, and this is the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We're available wherever you find podcasts. You can also find us on YouTube. While you're there, make sure you hit the subscribe button. It helps us get in front of more Hawkeye fans. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Well, here we are. A rematch of the national championship game from a year ago. It's Iowa. It's LSU. The winner this time will move on to the final four. The loser sees their season come to an end and programs uh, certainly changing going forward. This is as big as it's going to get in women's college basketball. Yes, there is still a final four in front of us. There is still a national championship game. But this one, boy, the intrigue is incredibly immense for this one. And we're going to talk a lot about what's happening between the lines. We're going to break down the game, and that's what we do here on Locked On Hawkeyes. But there is a lot more to this game than just what's happening uh, between the lines. And in a way, it can be unfortunate, but in a way, this is about the growth of the sport. And what we're seeing right now, a huge portion of that is the extras that go into it. And that's why the country is watching. That is why the world is going to be watching this one. And it's going to do numbers unlike anything ever seen before for an elite eight matchup in women's college basketball. It's going to be new numbers that are through the roof. And we've seen through the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament, the win against Holy Cross for Iowa, the win against West Virginia on Monday night, how big those numbers are. Numbers aren't in from the weekend and the easy victory against Colorado, but this one's going to be intense. And uh, we're going to talk about here at the top what it's going to take. So a little bit of an overview. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are maybe just starting to dip their toe into women's basketball. Maybe you're a newbie. Uh, you haven't been a part of women's basketball for a number of years. And uh, with that, maybe you just don't have the same kind of depth and breadth of the other teams that are out there. Now, I think we all know LSU, even if you jumped on the bandwagon a year ago and that incredible run for Iowa getting to the national championship game, you obviously know that. And you know the star player in Angel Reese. I think most everybody certainly knows about her, uh, knows about her going back to her days. If you've been around for a while, uh, going back to her days when she began her career at Maryland, went down there at LSU. There has been some histrionics. There's been games that she has missed this season. There's been a lot of question marks about Angel Reese and what was happening with her. Uh, the notoriety that came with winning the national championship a year ago, a flash in the ring and doing the you can't see me sign to Caitlin Clark at the end of the contest that created even more headlines. And these are things that as you grow the game are important. You need more superlatives. You need more angles. And that is something that absolutely has happened with this. But as we saw in the press conferences on Sunday, this is a rivalry that is being manufactured in a different way. And it's being manufactured by the places that promote the sport, ESPN. It's also being promoted in places that don't promote the sport, your news networks, those kind of things. And uh, there's an aspect of that. There's a race aspect. There is a lot of different angles to this one that, frankly, at times can be a little bit uncomfortable. And at times I've seen the LSU fan base look ugly. I've seen the Iowa fan base look ugly. And, and that's the unfortunate part of this because these are two fan bases that love their teams. And as you look at LSU historically, the way that they travel, you know, just right up the road from us on the wrong side of the river, over in Omaha, we see it on a yearly basis. Even when LSU doesn't qualify for uh, the College World Series in Omaha, we see them travel up there and you see purple and gold all over the place uh, doing that. And they travel incredibly well for all their sports. And the same thing, obviously, for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And Hawkeye fans here know that. Obviously, what we've seen throughout the years, you go back to 1980 and that incredible season in year number three of Hayden Fry getting to the Rose Bowl, the Bumblebees descending on Pasadena in that first Rose Bowl under Hayden Fry, and just the way that they have traveled historically for all sports. It has continued 
with women's basketball and built with women's basketball. Now, it's easy when you have a once in a lifetime player, a generational talent like Caitlin Clark. I mean, it's easy to follow along because you're watching a player and doing things that we just haven't seen before. We haven't seen a player play at this level and take her team to this level that we haven't seen for Iowa basketball. Made a Final Four back in the early 90s under C. Vivian Stringer, and then it was a long drought. And it was a drought with good basketball and good teams and programs that had won Big Ten championships, had had some success in the NCAA tournament, but couldn't get to this level. And here we are. LSU is loaded once again. They went into the transfer portal and brought in two of the biggest names out of the portal. Uh, One, Anissa Morrow. And that was a name that I know early on a lot of Hawkeye fans were very interested in Morrow. She comes in from DePaul. She put up huge numbers at DePaul. She was a high-volume type of player. Averages numbers down from what she was historically, certainly this season, because the offense isn't all through her. You know, when she was at DePaul the last couple of years, she's out there averaging, uh, what were the numbers? Just had them here. 25.7 a game a year ago, 22 during her freshman campaign, and averaging a double-double. This season, down to 16.5 points per game, 9.9 rebounds, but doing it certainly much more efficiently. Uh, Another thing that you have to know with Morrow, she's an excellent free throw shooter, over 80% on the season. That's something definitely to keep your eye on as we're kind of talking about a game plan. We'll get into that game plan and how this Iowa team is going to pull off the upset here. So that's a new name. And the other new name and one that we got to know incredibly well a year ago is Haley Van Lith. Van Lith, of course, at LSU a season ago, who Iowa beat in the Elite Eight to punch their ticket. Was that the player that Caitlin was not doing the you can't see me to? The Iowa side says it was just to their own bench. Maybe we'll find out down the line exactly the full story on that one. Van Lith, though, excellent shooter from the outside. Not a great playmaker, uh, but more of a shooter on this team. But she still can fill it up from the outside, averaging nearly 12 points per game. But Angel Reese is obviously one of the headliners here back from a year ago. The other name that you'll remember incredibly well from last season is Flage Johnson. And now just a sophomore Last year in her freshman campaign, she is a playmaker. She's a facilitator. She's incredibly good with the ball in her hands. She can do a lot of different things and a good defender on top of it at five foot ten. I would anticipate, and that was kind of the word that we got during the press conferences on Sunday, that Flage Johnson's going to get the assignment, at least the first crack at Caitlin Clark and trying to slow her down and certainly uh, do that. You look at the game a year ago, uh, Caitlin Clark 9 of 22 from the floor, 8 of 19 from the three-point line. As we saw in the game against Colorado, one thing we've seen this season from Caitlin Clark, and of course, had a ridiculous year last year, but even this year, even better, more efficient with the basketball. Um, But we've seen her, when the three-point shot's not falling at the level that we're used to, that we've seen her even more this season be able to get to the rim and finish that way and be able to be a scorer in that side. Now we saw the other part of it, and that's, of course, the passing ability, which has always been elite out of Caitlin Clark and the assist numbers through the roof year after year after year. But we're seeing just some of the beautiful passes that she made in against Colorado were just absolutely ridiculous in that part of it. It'll be Johnson. That'll get the assignment there. Not a real deep LSU team. And that's something we're going to get into a little bit more here. Is there perhaps an opportunity with the lack of depth of this team that potentially this could be a one where you see, I will be able to exploit that a little bit and make it going. Uh, another new name out there, Michaela Williams, a freshman. She's been really good this year. Doesn't uh, put up huge numbers overall, but one of the best three-point shooters on the team. Her and Flage uh, both up there, 37% for Williams and 39.5% from Johnson. So uh, that's what you get there. Another name to know is Smith. Uh, they're forward, six foot two. Another one inside that can do some damage. And uh, she had eight points, nine rebounds the last time out against USA, UCLA. Talent to team. A talent is not the question. We're going to talk deeper about the game. We're going to break it down, what it's going to take for Iowa here, and what's the game plan going to be? You go back to the last time Iowa pulled off a massive upset. Well, they did it with a game plan that nobody saw coming. What does Lisa Bluter and company have up their sleeve? We're going to talk about that as we continue here, breaking down Iowa LSU. That's what we're doing here. We got a weekend weekend recap as well coming your way on everything Hawkeye related. As we continue, this is Locked On Hawkeyes. Well, if you're making your way to Albany, 
the place to find some tickets for the game, or if you're already peeking forward to the Final Four, is Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball. Makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. Killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I love their ability to see exactly where you're going to be sitting. I've already been looking forward, thinking about making the trip to Cleveland for a Final Four. Get a view from your seat. I've never, I shouldn't say that. I have been in the building many years ago, calling an arena football league. How about game uh, way back in Cleveland, way back in the day. But getting the panoramic view of your seat before you buy something I absolutely love about game time. And the lowest price guarantee, game time will credit you 110% of the difference with your purchase. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and make sure you use the code Locked on college. That'll get you $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code locked on college. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back. It's the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. I'm Trent Condon. And as always, thanks for making Locked On Hawkeyes your first listen every day. All right, let's continue to break this thing down. And game plan, schematically, what's Iowa going to do to pull off the upset? A year ago, Iowa got blitzed in the first half of that game. And it was just one of those times where in basketball, you just got to throw your hands up. And that was the case in the first half of that game. Jasmine Carson came in. 55 of 170 from three. That's right. Now, she took a ton of them. She was thir- shooting 32%. She hits five in the first half, goes seven of eight in the game. And that really is the difference in the basketball game where Iowa loses to LSU. Iowa made a comeback. They got it back within eight. Then there was an awful, just brutal call against Caitlin Clark on the technical fall. They called a delay of game as she threw the ball behind her back, back to the baseline. It was an awful call. That referee crew was as bad as you're going to find. As every dayers know, I am not one that likes to blame officiating. There's bad calls, we'll call them out. If there's bad games, bad whistles, absolutely. But I I hate to fall into that trap. I think it's a loser mentality. I hate to have that as an excuse. But in this game, the way this goes and the way this is called is going to go a long way in determining who's going to win this basketball game. That's unfortunate. But it is a reality. We talked about LSU and their lack of depth. They go seven deep. This is not an overly deep team. And if you can find a way to get Reese and Morrow in foul trouble, they just don't have a whole lot there. You do wonder if this is going to be a game, and we've talked about that really throughout the course of this season. Is there going to be a game come NCAA tournament time where you're going to need the ability to make a big play, to come in, give you a good six, eight, ten minutes out of your backup bigs? Is this the time that we see Addison O'Grady go out there, you know, have six points, six rebounds, something like that, draw some fouls. That could be absolutely huge because they don't have your prototypical center. With the way that Iowa plays with Hannah Stolke at the five position, look, she's more of a four. And then she can beat most every post down the floor, and that's what they do, and they love to run the floor with her and get her out and get Caitlin on those throwaheads. That's what they do, and they said, you know what? Instead of trying to... Just play the traditional way. We're going to play our own way. And it's worked out incredibly well. I was the best offense in the country, both in scoring and efficiency. 118 points per 100 possessions is not even close to the number one team in the country in that aspect. And a big reason of it is what they do there. But against a team with a couple of good post players, what does Iowa do on the defensive end of the floor? A little bit deeper on LSU. Uh, They're sixth in defensive rating. Very good defensive team. 11th in offensive rating, so they can beat you that way. Third in rebound rate, and I think that's another huge key for this one. If I was going to win this basketball game, look, they don't have to win on the boards. They don't have to out-rebound LSU, but they have to keep it relatively close. They can't get out-rebounded like they did in the Final Four game a year ago against South Carolina, where they're, what, doubled up in that game, basically, with all the offensive rebounds. And that's the big component. You can't afford LSU to get second chances. That means that everybody's got to be involved. It can't just be Hannah Stolke. It just can't be Caitlin Clark. Everybody needs to be helping out on the boards. That's Kate Martin going in there. We know she could do that. Sydney Falter very well could be the X factor 
We'll get into her a little bit later on and what she can do in this one. Those are the things that you're going to need. If it's, say, 35-30 in rebounds, LSU wins it, you're in good shape. The way I was built, you can handle that. There's no doubt about it. One of the most interesting numbers, though, that I found digging into the analytics of LSU is LSU shoots it okay from the outside this season. But in terms of three-point shooting rate, they're 356 in the country, meaning there's 360 teams. They take the fourth fewest three-pointers of anybody in college basketball. They don't shoot it great, 32.1% from behind the arc this season. A reason for that, Angel Reese, 11%, 21% this season for Morrow. She hasn't shot it very well from the outside. Van Leth at 34. We talked about Johnson and Williams, the top three-point shooters there. So that's something there. We go back to the game plan that Iowa had against South Carolina, and they weren't going to use the same game plan against LSU. I thought it was weird, a little bit interesting, but... This is what teams do. This is what coaches do. Trying to find motivation at all different angles, right? We know Caitlin Clark does it, and we know it comes from all kinds of greats. And with Kim Mulkey, who's a great coach, great person, different conversation. She's a great coach, though. And the way that she is able to motivate her teams and to take any kind of slight, any kind of negativity, and turn them into ammunition for her team, she's an elite at that. She is absolutely at the top of college basketball as coaches, and able to do that. And she used that last year. The game plan that I had, which was very simple. We're going to sag off of every shooter out there. We're going to let them shoot the basketball from the outside. And we think that is our best chance to win. Coach Fitz was the one that came up with the game plan. She had the scout in that one. I would love to know before the game who has a scout on this one. Is it Fitz? Is it Amy? Uh, Abby Stamp? Is she the one that had the call here? Is it Jan Jensen? We'll see. Whoever has the scout, though, what they're going to come up with here. They've been scouting these teams. Coach Bluter talked about that. Uh, they also had a lot of scouts going on to UCLA. And a lot of work's been done that you never have to work, worry about. Uh, that's what happens, though, obviously, in college basketball. When you get to the NCAA tournament, you're scouting the potential teams that you're going to face. And they've been doing the work on LSU. You can also imagine they've been doing work throughout the course of the season. Let's be honest. This one is different. When you're talking about motivation and the way that game went a year ago, Caitlin Clark and the rest of the team handled it beautifully. There were no excuses after the game. There was no complaining. There was none of that from the team. It was respect to the champions. Caitlin Clark could have made a bigger deal out of Angel Reese and the disrespectful nature that she showed on the floor. Caitlin also knows that she does some of those same kind of things and she handled it right. But now, this is your last chance. This is the last opportunity. There is no coming back. Caitlin Clark will be off to the WNBA. She very well could be off to the Olympic team. This could be the final time we see Caitlin Clark in a Hawkeye jersey. And you know that motivation for the greats, what it can be like. I think you're going to see her playing at a high level. Now, one thing you do worry about is Caitlin can rev a little bit hot. She can, when those times happen, and we've seen them from time to time, just go back to Monday night against West Virginia. Go back to the first game of the NCAA tournament against Holy Cross. And, and that, that meter's ticking a little bit too high. That could be a problem. She's normally able to right herself and be okay. And I think that'll be the case again here. But something to keep an eye on. My game plan is much like what we saw last time. Now, you cannot completely sag off of all the shooters like they did last year against South Carolina. But make them make shots. Make them do that. Begins inside with Morrow and with Reese. It's a really difficult combination to stop. And if this game gets into a slugfest, if this game gets the physical brand, if this is the old, well, the old school Pistons type of game, we're talking 1990s NBA basketball translated here to the women's game, I was in deep trouble. And they very well could get run out of the gym again. If the game's called tight, if it is an up and down affair, if this is a game where I was able to dictate pace, I think they have a really good shot. I anticipate you're going to see some switching defenses. I also wonder how deep they're going to go in the bench. I talked about O'Grady. I think there's a real potential for needing her. Even A.J. Edinger, can she come in and give some minutes? 
What about Taylor McCabe? What about Kylie Fearbach? Right now, I'm tightening the reins. I'm saying we are going to go with the group that got us here. And we're really going to shorten down that bunch bench outside of the post players. And it's going to be Caitlin for 40 and Kate Martin for 40 and Gabby Marshall for 38. Maybe get her a breather for a minute each half because of what she's going to be doing defensively on the other end of the floor. And he had a sulky stay out of foul trouble. But go with the group that got you. And the one starter that I didn't mention is Sydney Falter. And with a Fulter out there, this team is built differently than they were with, with Molly Davis. And Molly Davis not going to play. And if they advance, that might be a different conversation we'll get to for next week. But in the here and now, Sydney Fulter, the playmaking ability that she has, the toughness that she shows. I mean, how many charges has she taken this year? The ability to rebound very well at her size. The physicality that she plays with inside, outside game offensively. She has so many different tenets and so many different things. She played two minutes in the game last year against LSU. When you're talking about difference makers, players that were there a year ago, that's one we just don't know. I think a Fulter is going to be ready for this moment. Final thoughts on the game and a weekend, weekend recap. Easy for me to say for Iowa sports over the weekend. We'll do that as we continue. It's here, the big one, Iowa LSU. So pumped up for this one. We continue Locked On Hawkeyes. Are you watching Fox Sports, FS1, ESPN on your TV all day long? Do you have to turn the volume down with all that shouting? Well, it's time for you to make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories with all, without all that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, and streaming 24-7 on YouTube, or also you can find it on the free Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with your smart TV, as well as the Fire TV stick. You can just plug that into your existing TV, and it'll provide access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's baseball, and it's here, college basketball tournaments, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels. They deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands and all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On, most of the big pro leagues, college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep on up to date on the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and a whole lot more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. You want to check this out? Trust me on that one. You can learn more at Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. That's Amazon.com slash Locked On Fire TV. Trent kind of back with you one final time. All right. So we talked about the game plan. What's it going to take? Keep rebounding at bay. Don't get dominated on that facet. Shoot the ball well from the outside. That's an angle. It goes without saying, but definitely have to do it in a matchup like this. Stay out of foul trouble. Get them in foul trouble. There is a path to get the victory here. If LSU goes out and hits 12 three-pointers, it very well could be game over. But if Iowa can dictate pace, if they can get LSU a little bit uncomfortable, get them in some foul trouble, get them doubting themselves a little bit, and let's keep Kim Mulkey off the floor. How about that? Talked about the refs and the way that they call the game. Don't allow her to intimidate you. And that's what she does. It's an intimidation tactic that works incredibly well. We've seen this from coaches in the past. But Kim Mulkey, what she did being on the floor throughout the course of the national championship game a year ago was an embarrassment. It was an embarrassment for the sport. It was an embarrassment for women's college basketball. It was an embarrassment for LSU whining and pleading and begging on the sideline and doing it while games were going on. You can't do that. So this crew, show some gumption. Don't let her intimidate you. Because if you did, and if she does, 
and I was probably going to be in trouble in this one. Every time that I've had doubt about this Iowa women's basketball team, they've responded. I've had doubt about this game. I've had concerns about it if we were going to see it. When the bracket came out, I said, oh, no. The way that they play, the physicality that they bring, coupled with the Hall of Fame coacher, all those things are very difficult to overcome. Caitlin has proven me wrong plenty of times before. Am I going to put a bet in for LSU? Take the point and a half, I'll just play the money line. I will. You can find it over at FanDuel. Iowa's slight favorite in the game. I'll do it as an emotional hedge. If I'm wrong, I'm going to be smiling ear to ear. If I'm right, I'll have a couple of bucks in the pocket. Final score, LSU 81, Iowa 73, and LSU moves on to another Final Four. That is my prediction for the game. Finally, uh, on the Hawkeye front this weekend, Iowa baseball with another series victory needed this one uh, once again as they get it done in games two and three against Minnesota. Jumped out to a 7 nothing game in game one of the series and then promptly gave up, what was it, 14 straight, something like that. I don't have it in front of me, but uh, lost on Friday night, then bounced back and get the win on Saturday and Sunday. That's two consecutive victories. Look, Iowa's got a ton of work to do to put together a resume to be NCAA tournament good. Disappointing for a team that was ranked in the top 25 preseason and certainly are a long ways away from that. But if you keep stacking up series victories throughout the course of the year, you're going to be in really good shape going forward. Did we need to against Minnesota against Purdue? Schedule is going to get a little bit more difficult uh, here in the coming weeks in the Big Ten. And one other note with uh, Iowa softball. How about Adams getting a no-hitter on Friday night? Uh, just a, a great, great work there. I know Coach Gillespie's working hard trying to get this program rebuilt get it back to what it was under Coach uh, Blevins for a number of years. And, and it's, it's taken longer than I think a lot of people wanted or hoped for, but they made that run a year ago in what equates to the softball NIT in winning that, was it, which was great to see. We'll see. Building blocks just keep going. It's tough to do in the Big Ten. Big Ten is a great softball conference and has had a lot of success in past years, but Iowa slowly but surely building things up and maybe more importantly starting to reconnect with those local kids. And we've seen a lot of good talent, unfortunately, from the state of Iowa. I'll leave the state to play softball over the years. A little re weekend recap for you here as we get ready for tonight. Iowa, LSU, 6 o'clock on ESPN. And we will be back with you with an instant reaction one way or the other in your feeds coming up later this evening. Thanks for making Lockdown Hawkeyes your first listen every day. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Go Hawks.